two years ago, I made this video. The first single I released as a singer was this year on May 20th. I had 981 Facebook page likes, 20 monthly listeners on Spotify, and no actual fan base. Today, five months later, I have 2010 page likes on Facebook, 2,400 monthly listeners on Spotify, and these are just some of the comments and messages that I receive on a daily basis. At the time, I was, for all intents and purposes, a new artist, just getting back into releasing music, trying to build a fan base. Now, I'm not making music as a solo artist because I've been releasing a new song every two weeks for a whole year with my new group, Some Kid Punk. Starting from zero fans in June of 2021, we've grown to over 24,000 monthly listeners on Spotify, 3,600 plus followers on Instagram, and thousands of real fans who stream every release, watch every new video, and engage with us in comments and messages every day. Almost nothing I recommended and talked about in that first video is at all relevant anymore. It's time for an update. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what we changed, exactly how we adapted, and exactly how we've been able to go from cold start, zero fans, to a rapidly growing artistic collaborative with a breakout fan base in less than a year. So let's get into it. In late 2019, I released this video detailing how I was getting fans for my solo music career using Facebook ads and Spotify's recommendation engine. At the time, I had two or three singles either coming out or already out on streaming platforms, and Facebook wasn't completely dead yet. And in that video, I talked about running Facebook ads with my performance video of my song Sacrifice. No call to action button, just generating video views and engagement instead of clicks. Then when the song came out, I ran an add to anyone who had watched 75% or more of that video and directed them to the song on Spotify. That worked really well at the time because all of the people going to Spotify to stream the song had already heard it and I knew they liked it given that they watched the whole video. So that gave Spotify really strong signals about what type of listener likes the song and what other types of music and songs they listen to. And due to that, my song got placement on the algorithmic Discover Weekly playlist. Spotify uses existing data from the list listeners of the song to know who to recommend it to by putting it on their Discover Weekly playlist. That data was super accurate because of the advertising. So Spotify had an easy time finding me more listeners algorithmically. But things quickly changed from there. In 2020, a number of things happened that would change my path dramatically. For one, I started a big collaborative music project with the group of musicians I came up with in Orlando over the last 10 years. Number two, TikTok exploded onto the scene, Instagram pivoted heavy into vertical video on the Instagram platform, and they released their Reels video format, mirroring the style and the functionality of TikTok. And third, Due to TikTok and Instagram Reels, Facebook started losing far more market share than it ever had before, actually losing users for the first time ever. Fourth, Apple released its iOS 14 update, which would change digital advertising forever. No longer could I accurately target fans of niche artists on Facebook, and Facebook's ability to keep track of my fans was dealt a crushing blow. My old strategy needed to change. Here's a snapshot of where my new group, Some Kid Punk, is at today in May of 2022. So first, let's talk about how I went from solo artist to starting a group and releasing a single every two weeks. Then let's dive into the all new ad strategy that helped us adapt to all the changes that went down in 2020. And then let's talk about how you can steal that strategy and use it to generate the same momentum we have today for your career. In late 2020, I formed an artistic collective with my former roommates and coworkers and fellow artists. And we've resolved to put out a song every two weeks, and we've kept up with that for the whole year. To start off, we got together a backlog of finished songs leading up to June of 2021. And in total, we were able to get 
finished mixes of about eight songs before we launched. At the time, I began filming every recording session and cataloging and storing all of the footage in early 2021. I also began editing together one minute documentary snippets of our creative process. After a while, I started boosting these posts on Instagram. Nothing crazy, no Facebook ads manager, nothing intense, just using the in-app ad platform on Instagram to distribute it to a lightly targeted audience based on the different genres we make songs for. We spent all year up until the fall publishing these documentaries and just boosting them for a dollar to two dollars to five dollars a day depending on what was going on at the time. One of the songs we released, Pick Up, was particularly catchy. It's it's the obvious hit of the bunch. And before we even put it out, people were demanding its release in the comments of our videos. They knew this song before they even knew the name of it. And when we put it out, it immediately became our most streamed song. Later that year, it began to pick up Discover Weekly distribution. And that's exactly what artists should be focusing on when it comes to Spotify. Not buying spots on user playlists, not playlist plugging services, not editorial playlist pitches. Algorithmic playlists are not only far more heavily streamed by Spotify users, they're also laser targeted with some of the best artificial intelligence in use today. And they deliver unheard songs to people who are nearly guaranteed to love them. Because we had so much qualified listenership going straight to Spotify to stream that song pickup, we got a small Discover Weekly bump at first, that was successful. So then we got a bigger bump and then bigger and then whoosh, massive spike. Around the fall, our first documentary series ended with the completion of an artwork grid on our Instagram. Instagram feed. That was fun to make, it was cool, and it provides a lot of context to new fans about who we are and what we're like. It, it builds a world for anyone who discovers us on Instagram and then goes to our profile to learn more. But it's not what got us to where we are today, and it's not what's going to push us to new heights. It's just a strong foundation. And I recommend that any artist takes time to build that world. Content that fans can binge and dive into before you try to generate an avalanche of new attention. Because we have this solid foundation, the people who are really committed from the first listen, they go and they watch all of these videos, they comment on them, they like them, and now they know who we are and they stick around more. Cut to the fall of 2021, my wife got pregnant and my life got hectic. We continue to release new singles every two weeks and work together on a weekly basis and film it all, but I stopped putting out that video content. Then at the beginning of 2022, I met with the lead account strategist at our music marketing agency, IndieX, to form a plan to promote some kid punk using the strategies that are working best right now for them in the agency. Luckily, Ed Isola of Indie folk band the 502s is one such account manager and he'd recently been generating unbelievable success with instagram reels ads using our fan finder video ad strategy this strategy involves using candid what you hear is what you see style performance videos to generate attention in listeners it's the exact same strategy i detailed in that previous video from 2019 adapted for the instagram reels platform so that became my strategy i took all of the footage i had of us recording the 20 or so songs we have put out and I began to sync it to the finished tracks so that you could see the exact moments you were hearing as they were being recorded, the literal moment it was recorded. Then I cut those all into high action, catchy 30 to 60 second vertical videos and I published as many as I could. To this day, I'm still working through all of that footage and trying to get more reels out to represent all of the songs that we put out so far, but we've got at least half of them covered now. So when I recorded that last video in 2019, as I said, we were able to really niche down when targeting ads. I was able to successfully target the exact artist that my song sounded like. Nowadays, that's not working so well because of iOS 14 and other changes to these ad platforms. So as per Ed and Jack's advice, I put together some broader lifestyle-based interest targets. One audience for media figures, one audience for clothing and streetwear brands related to our cultural scene, one for our genre, and one that was just wide open, just United States, 18 to 65, all genders, just they had to like Spotify because I was sending everyone to Spotify from these ads. I then put dozens of these Reels ads into these audiences. Each audience was showing up to 20 different Reels ads at once and Facebook slash Instagram ads manager was just figuring out which Reels ads worked best for each audience on Instagram. Now after a while, the campaign
campaign settled down to a meaningful target cost of around 15 to 25 cents per click. And while that may seem like a lot, it's exactly what we were going for. Each of the ads in this campaign, when it's clicked on, sends users to our Spotify profile. Not a playlist, not the song they were listening to in the ad, our artist profile. Ed advised me that this is what worked best for him long term, but one of our fans reached out to me and told us how hard it was to click into every single we released to stream each song. So we put together this playlist of all of our singles and stuck it at the top of our profile using the artist pick feature. While the playlist doesn't get a crazy amount of followers, it does get a fair amount of streams. And over time, people have populated the comments of almost every ad that we run asking for the name of the song in the ad. So what usually happens is users see the name, click through, find the song they want to stream, then they check out other songs if they like it. Here's the interesting thing. One of the 20 songs we're advertising has performed far and away the best out of all the ads we're running. And it's for a song we released on New Year's Eve of 2021, a song almost nobody streamed up until we started running ads called We Don't Make It To Midnight. This, poor population fixated on wealth. this, this song has brought in more fans over the last two months than we brought in during all of 2021. And we almost missed it completely. We had no idea it would perform this well. We would have never known what a strong performer it was if we hadn't just made reels for every song and let the ad platform figure the rest out. So two weeks ago, this song receives its first Discover Weekly distribution and quickly became our second most streamed song ever and our second breakaway single right after Pickup, the one I talked about from 2021. The sentiment surrounding the song has been crazy and it's a side of our sound that's completely separate from the pop rap feel of Pickup. So we're now getting fans from two completely different genre spaces and they're cross pollinating across all of our singles. The costs on these ads continue to drop by the day and the number of fans we recognize in our comments and DMs continues to grow. And what's got me the most excited is that there's no telling what songs might be the next to prove breakout hits among our fan base and fans we've yet to tap into because we still have about a dozen songs that don't have corresponding reels yet. It's like unwrapping a, a Christmas gift or a loot box. There might be gold in those songs. We really don't know. By having a different fan finder for every song, we've effectively automated our own A&R. Using post-marketing and the fan finder method, we're back testing months old songs to find hits using a real live audience and two algorithmic artificial intelligence platforms, Facebook ads and Spotify recommendation engine. And many of the people from that live audience become fans of the project overall. So it's killing three birds with one stone for several orders of magnitude less budget than a label would spend on the exact same processes. It's not magic, it's just good marketing and you can do it too, anyone can. Since I last published that video in 2019, our fan finder method training has been completely updated. It now features direct recommendations and tutorials from our IndieX agency specialists, including Ed and Jack, the, the people who helped me put together my strategy. And it covers how to plan and shoot and edit fan finder style videos, just like I did. Whether you're hiring a videographer or recording them on a smartphone or breaking out a mirrorless camera, all bases covered. And then it also covers how to to distribute those videos organically on all major platforms to get the most for your effort before you even turn on any ads or spend any money. And it walks you through advertising these videos on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and the original, the OG, Facebook, with step-by-step -step tutorials from our agency specialists that cover all the most current best practices. It also goes over frequently asked questions about the strategy. So even if you've never advertised before, or even if you're used to advertising in a completely different way, you'll have everything you need to get fans every day from any platform, no budget, micro budget, or huge budget. For our full stack creative audience only, if you use the link that's on screen now or in the description, you can save over 50% on the training and get some bonuses thrown in. If you don't like the training, you can request a refund anytime within 60 days and our team will refund you immediately, but you keep the bonuses as our gift. Our growth, the growth of my project over the last few months has been a night and day difference from the more organic sort of hand-to-hand -hand light boosting combat we spent all last year working on. But knowing we have a solid foundation of content, I feel confident we're going to be able to scale our efforts and grow by three to 10 times this year. We've got over 30 recorded 
and mix songs, some that are out already that don't have reels yet. And I'm willing to bet within that set, there's at least two or three more breakout hits and high performing ads to be found that start getting us loads of new fans on and off Spotify. I haven't been this excited about music marketing since I started Entrepreneur in 2017 or since I started this YouTube channel in 2019. I feel like a whole new regime of strategies and possibilities is taking shape after this massive transitionary confusing 2020 and 2021. And I think there are many, many indies out there, maybe even you, who are gonna use and adapt and even improve these new methods that are creating such drastic results for my group and for all of the indies who make this community special. Again, if you wanna learn how to use the Fan Finder method, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you've been wondering where we been, don't worry. We've been restructuring our community, our website, and our membership for over a year now, but we're finally ready to start publishing again. New reviews, new tutorials, and new walkthroughs like this one on a consistent basis. So get ready to see a lot more from me and the rest of the indie musicians on the team because in many ways we're just getting started. We haven't even begun yet. Oh, and like and subscribe. Is that still that's still the thing on YouTube, right? Click the bell so you don't have to check back to see when we start dropping again. Is there still a bell? Is there still a bell notification? Like the video if it was helpful or informative or at least a momentary distraction from boredom and subscribe if you want to catch the incoming wave of videos just like this one. What would my life have been if I had only clicked the bell? If I had only clicked that bell. So click it. Don't regret. Click. Click the bell. And I'll see you in the next video. Or it'll be Gracie, or Jesse, or another indie from our team. Who knows? That's part of the fun, that's part of the whole fun of it.